hello fellow human it's halfway through the year and I think we should celebrate our successes and I know that we'll get through to the other side if we just escape into a book so now I'm going to perform the mid-year book freakout tag Hi, my name is Samantha, and I think I found the originators of the tag. I will post their links down below. And traditionally, this tag is to be used to kind of reflect on what you've read so far this year and what you're looking forward to, and also not to make yourself feel so bad about your Goodreads goal if you have a physical number of books that you want to read, but I think it could. For me, I have a reading goal of 50 books and I'm at 45 books consumed so far. I'm gonna kick this goal's ass, so yeah. Let's jump into these prompts. Right off the bat, what's the best book that you've read in 2020? And I feel like I should reintroduce myself. My name's Samantha and I'm obsessed with the book Oval by Ilya Wilk. This is what I would consider as a soft speculative sci-fi with a hint of the approaching apocalypse. We'll wait for that car to pass. I absolutely adore this book. In fact, it's, it's really kind of fighting for the number one slot in favorite books of all time. And it's um, pretty much just about how corporations would run this world to the ground if we rely entirely on their philanthropic skill. It's not skill, it's their, their shit. Best sequel you've read this year. That's gonna go to the Space Boy. I love these books, they're so cute. They're a graphic novel series about a girl that comes from a mining colony in space and she's transplanted back into Earth and she's trying to adjust to um, being a high schooler. It's a little soapy, but it's so cute and I just love the characters in it and I'm looking forward to the next book if I can ever get it. A new release you haven't read yet but want to. The Faceless Old Woman Who Secretly Lives in Your Home. I don't normally buy books before I've read them and love them, but I have a good feeling about this one because this, The Faceless Old Woman Who Secretly Lives in Your Home is one of my favorite characters from the podcast, Welcome to Night Vale. She's read by Mara Wilson, and actually I think this book is read by Mara Wilson if you listen to it on audio. And um, I actually did start reading it, just, I just read like the first paragraph, because you know, you gotta sample it. And I thought I could hear her voice through this. And I think that this is gonna be more character book than the previous book. Welcome to Night Vale. I know there's another one I haven't picked up yet, and I'm skeptical about it. I have good feelings about this one. I don't know how I, I don't know if I'm gonna read it to hours, but the first book was a big disappointment because I don't think that it was character focus, and that's what I was looking for. And yes, we're gonna get to this probably next month, I think. It feels like a beach read because it's got pirates, and it's a love story, and tragedy, and blah, blah, blah most anticipated release for the second half of the year that's gonna go to V.E. Schwab and her I think it's the invisible life of Addie LaRue something like that uh, I don't know if it's a standalone or what but uh, Schwab is a, an auto buy author for me so uh, yeah I'm definitely gonna be picking that up biggest disappointment from the year oh, uh, that would be Shauna McGuire's book come tumbling down only because I just felt like it was a book I've already read before in this series and I felt you could just see her writing template it was just really obvious on the page and it was just I don't know I didn't get anything new from it biggest surprise actually it's quite literally one of the biggest books that I've read this year and it was a surprise and I'm um I just finished it recently and that's a place of greater safety now I did only give this like a three three and a half star rating um it was still quite entertaining 
uh, and I was not expecting that in any capacity. As you can see, there are an awful lot of, these are all quotes and notes that are in the uh, book that I found interesting. And um, I also found that my humor is probably on the dark side with this thing. Cause this is a book about the French Revolution and it highlights the lives of three men that pretty much kicked off the whole thing. One of those men was Robespierre and he's cast in a different light, not in a way that you would expect for someone who is known as a dictator. It's, a, it's weird. And then his, his, I don't know if you call them colleagues, friends, whatever, but um, it follows, uh, okay, his name is Georges Jacques Danton, and they just call him Danton throughout, and Camille de Moulin. And I liked Camille, a lot of these quotes are from Camille because he's just, he's a snarky ass. Favorite new author? I have two. Obviously, Ilvia, and if she writes another book, I will definitely be picking that up. And also, Samantha Irby. I am actively reading, well, not actively, actively, I uh, read the first chapter and I had to put down the book because I picked up a project for the month of July. But I did read um, one of her books last month. Oh my god, I've already spaced on the title. It was Fictional Crush. I don't have a new crush. I don't even have any realism crushes. So, eh. if we were gonna push it, uh, maybe carryover crush from I think last year. I read the first book in the Children and Blood and Bones. Um, it, Rowan was the character that I thought was really. <laughs> I just think he's funny. He's bitey and hilarious. And um, he's kind of an app. He's not a guy that you would actually want to date, but I still want him to get with Zaylee. And I did read the second book in the Legacy of Orisha series. What is it? I have the cover here. So yeah, he's in there, <laughs> and he's he's cool. But my crush is Wayne. So, and that was probably the closest thing you can get to it newest favorite character, on the other hand. I actually have a bunch. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, are they twins? I know they're siblings, Dom and Laura from Oval. Uh, they, the book is set in Berlin and Dom and Laura come from um, uh, Spain. And they are siblings, as I said. Dom is a, he's developed an, a weather app, which is super snarky and hilarious. And Laura earns a living by making bets on The Bachelor. Their personalities are just super colorful and they're people that I would want to hang out with. So yes, I absolutely adore them. And also Cordelia from the Amberlo dossier. She's not someone you would want to meet in a dark alley because she's probably going to cut you, but she is very feisty and witty and uh, she's just, I wouldn't call her a role model, <laughs> but she's a fun person and um, I absolutely adored her and she's, she's just a kick-ass person. So yeah, she's a favorite character now too. A book that made you cry. I haven't cried, cried, cried yet this year. I'm sure that'll happen at some point, but I've come closest with White Rage. And that is a book that everyone should be reading right now. And so please go pick it up because yeah, you're gonna get white in the face with rage and then you're also gonna be stunned and gutted. Book that made you happy. Well, there's all those funny books that I read uh, Samantha Irby's so far, and Lori Notaro's uh, House Broken? The cover's here. And also, um, I did pick up a Sourdough. I, I did buy it. Okay, <laughs> it's back here somewhere. I picked that up specifically because it made me feel good, 
and I really wanted bread. So, what's the most beautiful book that you bought this year? I don't normally buy books unless I've ordered, and I, I mean, unless I know that I'm going to want to reread it. And um, there were two books that they have something in common, and that is Funky Florals, and the first of which. I actually had an e-arc of this book and I just had to get it because I liked it a lot. <laughs> and that's the book of Coley. I'm in the middle of The Trials of Coley, which is the second book in this series. And knowing what I know about this world, these fiddleheads are creepier than they appear on this page. But I still love them because they're cute. And then, um... I just recently read Creatures by Chrissy Van Metter, and this book, the ink spilled on these pages is equally as gorgeous as this cover. So I do recommend if you want something that's a cover by. Gotta love those sea anemones, 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 anemones. What do you need to read by the end of this year? There are two books that I need to get through by the end of this year that I really want to anyway. Whether or not I do, that is to be determined. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get through The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. I started this last month and on audio and was immediately thinking, I need to get this book, please. So I put it on hold. I also started a new project, which I will link up here for the month of July. And so I am going to listen to this on audiobook, but there were a bunch of quotes that are in here that I needed to pull. I made it to page 50-ish. And um, yes, so the audiobook is incredibly entertaining and wild. It's really well made and I am going to continue on with this and read it next month probably mid-month and then also we gotta start a new fantasy series and this is one of the highest rated on my Goodreads list and I it's also kind of big so I'm intimidated by it and it's gonna be taken down probably at the end of this year and that's it. That is the mid-year. I didn't freak out so much. I did gush a little bit, but that's to be expected. Anyway, uh, that is all for now. So thumbs up for beautiful book covers and that I actually had physical sources <laughs> to show you. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you around very soon with a new video, probably a book tag, probably a review. Because that's, you know, what we do here.